Hello, welcome to um, Exhibit Africa. It's fun and interesting uh, facts read to you by yours truly, Christine. I'm uh, excited to have you guys once again, and I'm really excited that we are finally winding down to uh, the last letter Z um, of our fun and interesting facts facts about the 54 uh, African countries if you missed out on your favorite country please uh, check back on our YouTube channel for the full series we started off with letter A right now we're at Z so uh, today we're gonna be uh, moving on to Zambia okay so uh, if you're uh, from Zambia hello <laughs> and if you want to know any information about Zambia um, if you're planning on traveling to Zambia uh, please this is the series you want to check out, okay? So, as usual, we're going to be looking at the culture name, the alternative name, the orientation, plus much more, including the demography, the languages, the symbolism, the history, and all that. So, let's get started with Zambia. So, before I start, um, I just want to let you know that uh, this is by... So, the facts are uh, compiled by everyculture.com if you want to check them out. Uh, read to you by yours truly Christine, brought to you by Kathy of Exhibit Africa Ubuntu Initiative. So let's get started with uh, the alternative name for, or oh, let's start with the culture name. So the culture name for Zambia is Zambian. Uh, the alternative name is the Republic of Zambia. Now let's get into the orientation. Zambia derives its name from the Zambezi River. Uh, the Zambezi runs across the western and southwestern border and then forms Victoria Falls and flows into Lake Kariba and on the Indian Ocean. Uh, let's check out the location and geography. In size, the country is roughly e uh, equivalent to the state of Texas, about uh, 290,585 square, square miles. Uh, the unique butterfly-shaped boundaries are the result of the European scramble for Africa's natural resource in the early 19 in the, in the early 1900s. I beg your pardon. Uh, the capital is Lusaka, bordering neighbor. Uh, the capital is Lusaka, bordering neighbors at the Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, and Angola. Now, before I continue on, I just want to let you know that some of the uh, facts that I uh, might be sharing in today's episode might be outdated. So feel free to uh, update us in the comments with any current information or I would encourage you to do some more research. Okay, so it, uh, Zambia is a landlocked country with several large freshwater lakes, including Lake Tanganyika, Lake Nyeru, Lake Buengueru, and the largest man-made lake in Africa, which is Lake Kariba. The terrain consists of high plateaus, large savannas, and hilly areas. The highest altitude is the Muchinga Mountains at 6,000 feet. Uh, the Rift Valley cuts through the southwest and Victoria Falls, uh, the most visited site in Zambia, which is in the south. There are several game parks in the country. Some consider Southern Rangwa to be the best game park on the continent. The population is comprised primarily uh, of 90, and I beg your pardon, the population is comprised primarily 97% of seven main tribes and a collection of 75 minor tribes. There is also a small percentage of citizens from other African nations. The remaining population is of, of Asian, Indian, and European descent. Because of conflicts in the border, countries of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Angola, there has been a large influx of refugees in the recent years. Let's check out the linguistic affiliation. English is the official language as the country was once an English colony from 1924 to 1964. While many people speak English in rural areas, tribal languages are spoken in addition to a few other vernacular languages. Each of the 75 tribes living in the country has its own dialects and language. The main vernacular language are Bember, Lozi, Rwanda, Rwanda, Ruvale, Nyanja, Tonga, and Tumbuka. Let's check out the symbolism. 
The background of the national flag is green, symbolic to the country's natural beauty, with three vertical stripes in the lower right corner. The three stripes are red, symbolic to the country's struggle for freedom, black representing the racial makeup of the majority population, and orange, symbolic to the country's copper riches and other mineral wealth. A copper-colored edge eagle is on the upper right corner, which symbolizes the country's ability to rise above its problems. Zambia is noted for its rich wildlife and landscapes, using those resources to promote tourism with the slogan, The Real Africa. The most notable landmark is Victoria Falls, no, known locally as the Mosia Tunya, which means the smoke that thunders. It is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and even though it's shared with Zimbabwe, it is a source of great pride to Zambians. For many years, uh, the saying copper is king was symbolic to the country because copper was the main contributor to the economy. Now let's check out the history and ethnic relations, emergence of the nation. One of the cradles of the human race is the Northern African Rift Valley, which includes modern day Zambia. This area traces human settlement back almost 3 million years. In Zambia, sites in the north and south re uh, record, record back to 60,000 years ago. Tribal migrations in the only past, tri tribal migrations is only in the past 300 years have determined the makeup of the present day Zambia. Between 1500 1500 and 1800, the Rwanda and Ruba people traveled from Congo and became a powerful group. The Ngoni, originally from South Africa, escaped from the Boers and Zulus and settled in the eastern Zambia around 1850 to 1870. Another powerful tribe, the Lozi, dominated western Zambia and also originated from the Congo in the late 17th century. By the beginning of the 20th century, these tribal migrations had transformed the area into a complex, complex society tied together by conflicts and trade. In the late 1800s, Portuguese and Muslim traders moved further inland and established trade with tribes. The main items were gold, ivory, and slaves. It's also at this time that the missionaries established themselves. The most famous probably being David Livingstone. He worked hard to stop the slave trade and opened the door for the British who wanted to prevent the Portuguese from occupying the land and connecting Angola to Mozambique. Livingstone died in the Bangweuru swamps in 1873 after exploring much of the area that is now Zambia. Livingstone's exploring, exploring was tied directly into the British colonial history and the scramble for Africa. Cecil Rhodes founded the British South African Company, which wanted to connect the Cape of, Cairo, of Cairo, uh, which wanted to connect the Cape to Cairo. Rhodes quickly became one of the wealthiest men in Southern Africa. In 1898, he was granted a charter by the Queen Victoria to govern the territory then under British control, under the belief that there was there were gold and minerals along the Zambezi River. He financed British expansion into these areas. The British South African Company established its ed headquarters in the town of Livingstone. In 1929, the British government took, con took back control and made the area of made the area a protectorate named after Rhodesia. The capital was moved to Lusaka in 1935. At this time, large copper and other mineral deposits, including gold, were found in the Copper's Belt, a province in the north central region. The mines, were, the mines became the driving force for the expansion and settlement of the country as a whole. To fill jobs in the mines, Zambians came from all over the country and settled in urban areas. In 1953, the British Colonial Office decided to unite Nyasaland, Malawi, Southern Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, 
and Northern Rhodesia into the Central African Federation. There were strong opposition to the Federation because of substantial um, because a substantial amount of money was funneled out of Northern Rhodesia to support Southern Rhodesia. The struggle against the Federation soon turned into one for freedom as the independence fever swept across Africa. Strikes by mine workers turned into power base that formed the United National Independence Party, led by Kenneth Kaunda. Civil disobedience organized by the United National Independence Party led the British government to allow elections. The Republic of Zambia gained its independence on the 24th October 1964 with Kaunda as the first president. Now let's check out the national identity. The people retained strong ties to their tribe or clan, but there was also a strong national identity. Zambia became a settling ground for many migrating tribes around 1500 to 1700, and those migrants helped create crossroads of culture in the country. These tribes have lived in harmony with each other for decades, while the first president, Kenneth Kaunda, introduced the slogan one Zambia, one nation. It was considered a strong symbol for the country's unified national identity. Now, let's move on to the ethnic relations. The 75 tribes that make up Zambia coexist relatively well in, a com in comparison to tribes in neighboring countries who were purposely pitted against each other as part of the colonial governing policies. In these calculated causes, the, minor the minority tribe would usually develop primary power. This would only fuel tribal hatred. In some countries, that animosity still exists and creates major social problems. The main tribes in Zambia are Bemba, Nangoni, Lozi, Chwewa, Chokwe, Luanda, Luvale, Tonga, and Tumbuka. Most Zambians have joking relations with other tribes. The relationships go back many years. For example, a, ba a Bemba may throw verbal abuses to a Nyanja, but this is done in a jest for the most part. This is an important distinction from other countries where greater anxiety and where greater animosity exists. Zambians may consider their tribe superior to another but there is an overall sense of unity across all groups. Another factor in these good relations is the large urban population. The vast brush regions provide for a great deal to open land and tribes generally do not infringe on one another. In the cities, there is a strong interaction between the tribes. Some members choose to marry out of their own tribes, which strengthen the ties between the different groups. The flip side is that Zambian society has become more homoge homogenized. So let's move on to urbanization, architecture, and the use of space. There is a trend to move away from vernacular building styles and techniques to more modern of West or Western ways of construction. Traditional, the type of building depended on the availability of materials. For example, basket weaving construction can be used in homes on the, of the eastern province, while construction using mud-covered small branches can be found in the rest of the country. Construction also depends on the tribe's customs. The Lozi and the Southwest build rectangular houses, while the Chua favors circular structures. Most of the roots are made of poles, and thatch. A great change occurred with the influence of missionaries and European colonial, colonialists. The settlers built using Western standards. The missionaries introduced the burnt brick used to build into square, stru into square structures, while the colonialists built wood frame structures with metal roofs. This proved to be quite hot and, adapt and adaptions were made, incorporating large roofs to allow for ventilation and spacious verandas to capitalize on the breeze. Examples of colonial architecture can still be seen in Livingstone as well as some examples of Cape Dutch influence from South Africa. 
when the British reigned, reigned over the countryside, they established British overseas management areas or small towns that were seats of government and business. Towns were laid out using a grid system. Villages were different, varying from tribe to tribe. The Chira would form a village in a crested, in a crest moon shape with the chiefs lodging in the center. The Lozi developed large homesteads enclosed in a fence. There was, this was for protection from warring tribes as well as safety for the tribe's cattle. A homestead usually consists of, um, of a main house, other houses, a social in, in soccer, a cooking in soccer, and other functional structures such as latrines or granaries. An insaka is a small roofed structure that is similar to a gazebo. Now let's move on to the food and, tech and economy. Food in daily life. The availability of food supplies depends on season and location. The main staple is nshima, which is made of maize corn. Mealy mealy meal is dried and pounded corn to which boiling water is added. It is cooked to a, consist a consistency of thickened mashed potatoes and is served in large bowls. The diner, the, the diner scoops out a handful, rolls it into a bowl and dips it into relish. The preferred relish is usually meat, goat, fish or chicken and a, and a vegetable. Usually Wrap, usually rape or colored greens or tomatoes, onions or cabbage. In rural areas where meat is not an option on a regular basis, nshima is served with beans, vegetables or dried fish. Mili mili is eaten three times a day at breakfast as porridge and as nshima for lunch and dinner. Buns are also popular at breakfast taken with tea. Other foods such as groundnuts, peanuts, sweet potatoes, and cassava are more seasonal. Fruits are plentiful, including bananas, mangoes, poppers, pineapples, which come from the hilly regions. In the cities, there are plenty of fast food establishments or takeaways that serve quick Western foods such as sausages, samosas, savory filled with pastries, burgers, and chips with a coca-cola there is also an increasing number of formal western style restaurants that are largely accessible only to the wealthy let's check out the food customs at ceremonial occasions food customs vary among tribes for example in the bemba culture it is taboo for a bride to eat eggs because it may affect her fertility another bemba tradition is to serve the newly weds a pot of chicken whose bones are being are, are then replaced in the pot and given to the bride's mother a lozi tradition is to eat porridge off to a stone to bless the couple most ceremonies including weddings funerals and initiation ceremonies involve lots of food and traditionally brewed beer let's check out the basic economy sharing a, a big pardon starting with the rural community life is supposed life is supported primarily by substance farming most villages have a small plot of land in which they farm maize groundnuts cassava millet sweet potatoes and other products some villages organize large fields to support the community and groups of women may grow their own crops for sale the eastern part of the country has a climate suitable for the growing of cotton. Coffee is grown in the north. Communities near lakes focus on fishing as a major industry. Selling their catch all over the country, Zambia is host to a variety of freshwater fish species, including carpenter and brim. In areas, in areas where water is scarce, cattle and other domestic animals are raised. While industrial manufacturing is limited, many, many everyday products are produced in the country, such as candles, cooking oil and matches. People in the smaller urban areas may have smaller shops 
all a stand in a local marketplace, selling produce or providing service such as water re watch repair. The market is a place not only for trade but also so socialization. But while some may be able to support themselves and their families on the farm in the village, job opportunities in the larger urban areas continue to contribute to the urban migration taking place in the country. Now, we'll move on to the land tenure and property. There are many plots of land in cities and rural areas. They are owned by individuals after purchase from the government. In the villages, the chiefs own the land and give out parcels to their supporters. It is this distribution, in this distribution, I beg your pardon, tribal customs and practices are honored. The government supports this form of distribution because the acreage to be distributed is vast and unpopulated. The government, is sti the government still owns most of the valuable land, especially the mines and other mineral-rich areas. In the large urban areas, there is a large uh, housing crisis. Shanty towns have been erected with no sewage and the majority lack electricity. The occupants of these areas are squatters who do not own the land but who have established their homes there and indeed whole communities. There are no laws preventing ownership of land by women. There are very few very few women own land in, pra in practice primarily because of cultural and historical precedent. 10% of the land is de demarcated by the government for the private ownership and most of that is located in the cities. The corridors uh, of the development that do not exist appear along railways and highways which are also demarcated usually by the large farmers who want to be tied into the transportation system. Okay, so we're moving on to commercial activities. Some of the locally produced agricultural products are sold domestically along with some household goods, clothes and other food items. In the years of Kaunda, there was an attempt to locally make goods needed by the country. Zambia also has had an agreement and the government of the with the government of the people of the People's Republic of China who built the Tar, the Tazara railway connecting Zambia to Dar es Salaam Tanzania and the rest of the world because Zambia is landlocked this link helped out with the limited trade that did occur while democracy was uh, ushered in president Frederick Chilumba open the Zambian doors to trade. Since that time, there has been a heavy influx of goods from England, Japan, the United States, and primarily South Africa, whose products have flooded the market and are very popular to Zambians. Let's check out the major industries. The copper mines are traditionally provided Traditionally provided for a major part of the economy. In 1996, copper accounted for 80% of the exports. A major portion of the mines were opened for privatization, but the government was still working to sell them off. Mines, are, mines were sold because of years of mismanagement and financial corruption. Zambia has had great agricultural potential and many large-scale farms have been established. The infrastructure for the distribution of goods though is very poor and poses a major obstacle for economic advancement in the area. The country does not support some unique the country does support some unique industries such as flourishing cement trade that exports primarily to the Zambia to Zambia's neighbors. Farms outside of Lusaka also export roses and they are also leading they all the, they are also the leading supplier to the European market. In 1995, 70% of the labor force was in agriculture, 18% in services, and 12% industry. In, in and 12% in industry. Let's move on to trade. The main exports are copper, cobalt, zinc, tobacco, maize, and emeralds. The primary recipients are South Africa, Japan, and Saudi Arabia. 
The main imports are automobile, automobiles, farming equipment, chemicals, and fuels. Food items from South Africa, Japan, Europe, and the United States. Now, let's check out the division of labor. Labor is primarily divided between rural and urban workforces. In the urban areas, jobs obtained are related to an individual's educated, educational levels. There is high unemployment in the cities with better paying jobs found in government work. Large businesses with the non-government organizations, NGOs, there are jobs. these jobs are held by people with higher education, especially those who have had schooling overseas. The poor, lesser trained individuals who come to the cities may manage to earn a living by doing old jobs or owning a small shop. So that's the end of part one. So we'll carry on with uh, uh, we'll carry on with part two. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we shall carry on with the social stratification. See you then. Thanks. <music>